Uh, so it's 5 p.m. Um, on Sunday afternoon, and I've just come here to the DeVos Centre to register for the new tech program. And I'm just about to get my laptop checked. I've just checked in, and I've got my my bag and program for the week. So it should be quite exciting. So I've just arrived in gallery room E and we're basically here to check our connection to um, the internet. So these are our instructions. How are you feeling? Exhausted on four hours sleep, but I'm looking forward to the big conference to come. How are you feeling? Yeah, excited. Um, looking forward to meeting everyone and finding out what this is all about. Um, but I'm really tired already, so a bit nervous about the 9 o'clock finish tonight. Let's see how that goes. How are you feeling? Good, Michael. It's really good to be here. Look at the exciting place we are. Yay! Adam! Adam! Whoa. Yay. <laughs> Monday morning, it's about 7.30am and we're here at the New Schools Network. Um, how are you guys feeling? <laughs> Tired, but I'll be feeling better after this debate. Okay. Christine? I'm really excited. Everybody we've met has been so friendly and I'm looking forward to the conference beginning. And Lisa Marie? And I guess. Oh, I'm just very excited to be here and all these people. I can't believe how many people are here so early in the morning. All right, so we've got some guys here from Parramatta Marist, and uh, it's like we're next door neighbours, isn't it, guys? How are you feeling? Uh, yeah, really excited to be here. Okay. Looking forward to doing something different, something new. Bradley, what do you have to say? Uh, other than the jet lag, uh, yeah, it's going to be a great day, I'm sure. So um, here we are, it's about 7.30, and um, we're here on the Monday morning, and we're just about to... Um, get started with our presentations and uh, we're all very excited. All I can say is thank goodness for coffee. Uh, we have um, uh, in California the Applied Technology Center uh, in Montebello. So, <laughs> I mean, I'm going to enable you to connect with people from all over the country that teach similar subject areas um, that are going to be tackling similar uh, problems um, and, and, and put your heads together around um, developing kind of a new future of learning and uh, many uh, district representatives here as well to participate um, and, and create something that is uh, new and different and part of a bigger movement to, to change the face of, of teaching and learning in the United States. We're not just regurgitating an answer, we gave them but they're finding their own. We're inspiring them to be creative and so this idea of creating a curriculum that is engaging students is something somewhat of a shift because oftentimes we as educators think, well, I covered my material, they should have learned it, and if they didn't, it's their fault. And what the new tech model asks you to do is to always be reflecting on, am I engaging that kid, am I hooking in this knowledge? Now, certainly we don't get there every single day, there are some days that are better than others, but our strive is always to engage the student in the curriculum so that they want to know what we're trying to teach them. One of the things that we've observed that when you throw a computer and hook it up to the internet to in front of students is that it changes everything. Instead of information being scarce, information is overwhelming. Instead of having to memorize a bunch of information that you have to store for your next class because they're going to take away that textbook from you at the end of the year, um, now the information is always accessible, but you have to make sense of it and, and put it to use. And so um, this shift also happens for uh, the teacher because we as teachers are oftentimes behind the ball when it comes to adopting new technologies. Our students oftentimes know about new ideas. And so automatically it puts you in an area where you are not the expert. And that is something fundamental to new tech as well. That while you have more knowledge in some areas, you have less knowledge in others. And this idea that it's an exchange between you and the students. In a new tech model, students don't have to wait for you to lecture on something. They can immediately go to the web and find it. You are not the sole deliverer of information. You become someone who helps them understand and contextualize that information. And that's absolutely critical for these students going forward. But we're all here now. And um, I have to believe that you're here because you care about kids. So you definitely want to get to know your NTN coach really well. We have our NTN IT support team. Are you in here? Just Andy. All right, yeah. Thanks for representing here. So, Somewhere. There they are. <laughs> 
So the trainers are actually network certified teachers, so they have gone through a process to become certified. In, in a and the others are free to find your um, section. Your so Michelle and Caroline are just checking well. out the Twitter feed there, we'll just following uh, some of the announcements that have been made. I've been um, tweeting on my mobile phone while this has been going on. Um, it's a great way of sort of keeping up to date with some of the announcements as they're made, but also some of the commentary on, on uh, uh, you know, the presentations as they happen as well. Good God, there's been a lot of chatter. There's been a lot of chatter going on. You're supposed to listen. <laughs> So we've just um, been working this morning on this collaborative document that um, Kelly, uh, our um, facilitator here, has created and um, we've used our Google Apps accounts to basically share it across the whole team this morning and um, this is, I guess you could say, a bit of a brainstorm in terms of our thinking on uh, the strategic implement implementation of PBL in our school and we've, we've looked at um, some of the positive learning experiences that we want to encourage in using PBL. Um, we've also looked at uh, the, the good sort of things that go into um, incorporating PBL into the curriculum, um, the things that we already know, the things that we need to know. Um, we're looking at school-wide outcomes and how we're going to connect uh, PBL implementation with those. Uh, uh, objectives, uh, norms, and today's deliverables. So we've actually got quite a few good organising principles, I guess you could say, for thinking about how we're going to implement PBL, and this is just the start of things to come. Soliloquy, is that the yeah. right terminology? Yeah, yeah. Um, based in Shakespeare's language, but almost as if it's a new scene in Macbeth, and that was yeah. the yeah. We've, we've always done things like that, though. Yeah, well, it's the same, it's just, it's just yeah, I, I suppose the difference. PBL, that's all. I suppose the difference is that in um, PBL, everything leads towards the end product. So do you need to know the, so you need to know the Critical Friends Protocol in order to move forward next? Um, kind of challenging that as an idea, just kind of curious, sort of what to pair one off the other. So you said I need, I need to know kind of where I'm going at the end. What do you know about the end of this week's worth of work in this session? Okay, so you, you know you're gonna, you know there's going to be a presentation, which is what prompted you to ask. That, that piece about critical so at the moment we're working on a project which actually involves developing a PBL project in our school and um, we're looking at a whole series of components that um, have been added to this um, echo page <coughs> and it's called um, Extreme Makeover Classroom Edition and actually has a whole series of, of things that sort of fit together and, and part of the um, you know, I suppose working out the, the project itself is to look at the different components and see how they fit together. And as we go, we're actually recording down some of the things that we need to know and the things that we already know in uh, a document that we're working on. And this is a really exciting document over here because it's actually got um, teachers from all around the world collaborating on the one document. Here we are, this is group four. And so we're looking here in group four at, at um, things that we know, need to know, and next steps. And as you go up, you can actually see that we've got other schools that are adding their thoughts. Um, and if I go further down, you can see other schools that have done their own need to knows and next steps. So it's great to be able to just see, even though we're working on our own project, we've got access to everyone's ideas, you know, and it's great to hear that people are sharing ideas across the room and taking a good idea and, you know, in some cases copying and pasting, but it's it's really cool to see those ideas go around. For the first attempt, I mean, there's a couple of things that we change, obviously, but for a first attempt, for all of the teachers have a great job over the world. Yeah, yeah, it went well. Yeah, and see, next time they'll be more confident. And um, even just for me to see, like, we started to do water quality, yeah. and I started to look at um, the water filtering process, and you guys had already done it. We touched on it. You just touched, but it was funny. 
some of the girls picked on up on that and you know, it was like Kathy, Kathy Smith's comment about eight hits mm. you know something that you just put away and then you don't touch on again and then they then went back into their notebook to have a look where they had done done it that previously was a section I did the yeah. eight hits so I got six done or whatever yeah it was oh yeah but no, this is we're part of doing the hits though yeah yeah because it's still part of the one project so it's recalling on what they've done in his mm. and they had to then we did so, a modern uh, experiment so at the moment I'm just working on this little task with Lisa Marie over here and um, what we're basically doing is we're having a look at the Caroline Chisholm College uh, U7 Connected Learning Assessment Task for um, Heritage which we do in Term 3 it's, it's already a, a PBL in the sense that um, it presents a, a real project based on real problems um, where the students basically have to promote a cultural heritage site to the UNESCO World Heritage Panel and um, basically what we're doing at the moment is rereading that task having a look at the different components and we've got as well um, New Tech have, have done this project planning and overview uh, table where they basically go through the basic components of a, of a good PBL and um, Lisa Marie at the moment is having a look at uh, where they line up because we're already seeing quite a lot of alignment so it's just um, seeing maybe uh, whether or not we need to tweak it a little bit or whether we need to add you know a couple of things to just make it um, consistent with this particular style of PBL but so far so good yeah. like this is this, this here yep. our task outline is pretty much the entry document but right we'd need I think to probably blend the, the outline with the I, I, I actually I was going to say that I agree with you I think the the entry documents that we've read this morning and, and kind of talked detailed through they, they've got a what what am I doing but they've also got a, an element of why am I doing this yeah. And you know, it's it's the idea of it being a real-world project, and I think that's what we'd we'd need to do if we're going to tweak yeah. it slightly. But I mean, I think that for the purposes of, of putting this, of putting it in the now, just so mm -hmm. we've got something to, for them to give us some feedback on, mm -hmm. given we've only got 20 minutes. This is really hard because it says it's five o'clock in the morning and it's right. three o'clock. So but you're you're just thinking five. we just do a bit of a, a, a copy and paste and just. Just put uh, put stuff from for the from, moment, yes, and, we'll have another and then we see what else yeah, needs to get. I'll just put it in for now. We'll have another okay. think in a couple of minutes. Cool. Um, and also, it, it's um, all allowed to make using sources, which is a skill that I've experienced with. So, but we know that projects always take a few weeks anyway. Probably it's going to take longer than I would normally spend on that. But um, if we're also going to be getting them to look at how they can write and use. Um, how are you going, Caroline? Oh, good, Michael. Oh, sorry. Just, um, I'm looking at a unit in Year 7, um, which is called Good Habits, and um, we've got a four focus areas that we're concentrating on in regards to uh, healthy eating, um, drug use, physical activity, and um, the last one is access to health information and services. So I'm sort of thinking of something, um, and we've discussed this at the faculty level, level something like the New South Wales Department of Health as um, wanting to improve adolescent health, that's particularly physical health, and then sort of having the four areas and separate, like having many projects within the four areas. So I'm just looking at the um, <coughs> program and sort of trying to adapt it to um, an endangered species from year seven from science, then into year eight, and then five. Otherwise, then we're losing the link between geography and science. To, to artificially create this link when now geography is coming back to the endangered species, and where they do look at the green whales and the like again in year eight, but with a global perspective, and Michelle has to do it in year seven in an Australian position. And they are the ones that then chug along through and ask questions and try and redefine what their project is going to be. Only because they
they need the information. If they don't need that awesome worksheet we had on the Industrial Revolution to do the project, then don't use the awesome worksheet on the Industrial Revolution. It's not going to fit in your project. So there are things that you've been doing all along that you have used. Maybe a worksheet, maybe a good poem that you enjoyed, maybe a good lab or a science class that you can use. It's just that you can't just okay, throw it open, in open it. because it's a good thing to learn or because it fulfills certain standards. Only throw it in if it's going to scaffold something for them to be able to accomplish that project. And if it doesn't work that way, then maybe you need to redesign and go back to the design of Hard work. I know it's been a long day, so um, we'll, we'll see you tomorrow. Have a great evening. If there's anybody else, I'll show you all. So, what did you guys think of today? Mm. So, what are your thoughts about? Exactly what you just said. No, I think it's really good that we've got this um, online message. Well, hopefully, somewhere is sitting at home right now, very excited that the first one that she's received, as far as I can see, is a Caroline Chisholm one. So hopefully, we'll get some really valuable feedback. Michelle, how did you find today? Uh, draining. Um, <laughs> But, you know, it, it's, yeah, I've actually developed a, something I'm pretty happy with, except I haven't completed everything at the moment. Um, come back a bit later tonight, finish the last section, and then send it off for review. Uh, I found it really empowering, Michael. Um, I think for me, the, the most crucial part of it is um, that I got out of today was in particularly giving the students more time at the beginning of a project to really focus on what they already know, what they need to know, and then how they're going to tackle the task. Uh, are you ready? Yep. <laughs> a little bit chaotic because I don't think there's as much direction as they think that there is, and I'd like to know a bit more rather than having to do so much. When you say know a bit more, in terms of theory or in yes, terms I'd of like practice? To see some samples. I'd like to see something go through. I'd like to see how they draft it, how they how they write the decisions, how they wrote it, and how they have then it evolved and how successful it was. That's what I'd like to see. You ready? So, yeah, it's been a good day. We've been uh, learning lots about particularly the structure of how project-based learning um, is managed and how it would be implemented. So I'm really enjoying getting down now the nuts and bolts of how to uh, put that into practice for a potential project for Year 8 next year for Hizzy. So it's been a good day, good finish, and I think that's going to set us up well for tomorrow. Natalie, how did you find today? Um, it was good. It reinforced some basic information that I had already known about the structures about and how to follow the EPL, so that was good to reinforce it and know why that's really important. And this afternoon has been a good opportunity to get a new idea started and to find ways that we can learn about new ideas and get into that habit, creating really good ideas that will actually make this an effective and worthwhile thing to do. I say on a, a, at five o'clock, isn't it? But how did you find today, Christine? It's been a very interesting day to um, learn more about PBL. My session this morning on leadership was really affirming because the people that they were referring to are people that we've been talking about ourselves within our school, particularly because Michael Fullen and Moral Purpose. This afternoon session I think has been great where we've had the time to look at individual projects and each member of our community has made some great progress in terms of that 